Treaty with the Sioux and Sisseton Wapatom Bands, February 19, 1867. Whereas it is understood that a portion of the Sisseton and Wapatom Band, the Santee Sioux Indians, numbering from 1,200 to 1,500 persons, not only preserve their obligation to the government of the U.S. during and since the outbreak of the Mittawankatons and other bands of Sioux in 1862, but freely periled their lives during that outbreak to rescue the residents on the Sioux Reservation and to obtain possession of white women and children made captives by the hostile band, and that another portion of Sisseton and Wapatom Bands, numbering from 1,000 to 1,200 persons, who did not participate in the massacre of the whites in 1862, fearing the indiscriminate vengeance of the whites, led to the great prairies of the Northwest where they still remain. And whereas Congress, in confiscating the Sioux annuities and reservations, made no provision for the support of the friendly portion of the Sisseton and Wapatom bands, and it is believed that they have been suffered to remain homeless wanderers, frequently subject to intense suffering from want of subsistence and clothing to protect them from the rigors of a high northern altitude. Although at all times, prompt in rendering services when called upon to repel hostile raids and to punish depredations committed by hostile Indians upon the persons and property of the whites. And whereas the several subdivisions of the friendly Sisseton's and Wapatom bands ask through their representatives that their adherence to their former obligations of friendship to the government and people of the U.S. be recognized and that provisions be made to enable them to return to an agricultural life and be relieved from a dependence upon the chase for a precarious subsistence. Therefore, a treaty has been made and entered into at Washington, D.C., District of Columbia, this 19th day of February. A.D. 1867, by and between Louis V. Boji, Commissioner of Indian Affairs, and William H. Watson, Commissioners on the part of the U.S., and the undersigned chiefs and headmen of the Sisseton and Wapatam Band of Dakota or Sioux Indians, as follows, to wit. Article 1. The Sisseton and Wapatam Bands of Dakota Sioux Indians represent in council will continue their friendly relations with the government and people of the U.S. and bind themselves individually and collectively to use their influence to the extent of their ability to prevent other bands of Dakota or other adjacent tribes from making hostile demonstrations against the government or people of the U.S. Article 2. The said bands hereby cede to the U.S. the right to construct wagon roads, railroads, and mail stations, telegraph lines, and such other public improvements as the interest of the government may require over and across the lands claimed by said bands, including their reservation as hereinafter designated, over any route or routes that may be selected by the authority of the government, said lands, so claimed being bound on the south and east by the Treaty Line of 1851, at the Red River of the North to the mouth of Goose River, on the north by the Goose River, and a line running from the source thereof by the most westerly point of Devil's Lake to the Chief's Bluff at the head of James River and on the west by the James River to the mouth of Moccasin River and thence to Campesca Lake. Article 3. For and in consideration of the session above mentioned and in construction of the faithful and important services said to have been rendered by the friendly bands of Sisseton's and Wapatons who have represented and also in consideration of the confiscation of all their annuities, reservations, and improvements, it is agreed that there shall be set apart for the members of said bands who have heretofore surrendered to the authorities of the government and were not sent to Crow Creek Reservation, and for the members of said bands who were released from prison in 1866, the following described lands as a permanent reservation, viz. Beginning at the head of Lake Traverse and thence along the treaty line of the Treaty of 1851 to Compasca Lake, thence in a direct line to Rapin or the northeast point of the Coteau de Prairies, and thence passing north of Skunk Lake on the most direct line to the foot of Lake Traverse, and thence along the Treaty Line of 1851 to the place of the beginning. Article 4. It is further agreed that a reservation be set apart for all other members of said bands who were not sent to the Crow Creek Reservation, and also for the cuthead bands of Yankita Sioux, a reservation bound as follows. Beginning at most easterly point of Devil's Lake, thence along the waters of said lake, to the most westerly point of the same, thence on a direct line to the nearest point on the Cheyenne River, then down said river to a point opposite the lower end of Aspen Island, and thence on a direct line to the place of beginning. Article 5. The said reservation shall be apportioned in tracts of 160 acres to each head of a family or single person over the age of 21 years, belonging to said bands, titled to locate thereon, who may desire to locate permanently and cultivate the soil as a means of subsistence, each 160 acres so allotted to be made to conform to the legal subdivisions of the government. Surveys, when such surveys shall have been made, and every person to whom lands may be allotted under the provisions of this article, who shall occupy and cultivate a portion thereof for five consecutive 
consecutive years shall thereafter be entitled to receive a patent for the same so soon as he shall have fifty acres of such tract fenced ploughed and in crop provided that said patent shall not authorize any transfer of said lands or portions thereof except to the u s but said lands and the improvements thereon shall descend to the proper heirs of the persons obtaining a patent article six a further in consideration of the destitution of said bands of Sisseton and Wapaton Sioux, parties hereto resulting from the confiscation of their annuities and improvements, it is agreed that Congress will, in its own discretion, from time to time, make such appropriations as may be deemed requisite to enable said Indians to return to an agricultural life under the system in operation on the Sioux Reservation in 1862, including, if thought advisable, the establishment and support of local and manual labor schools, the employment of agriculture, mechanical, and other teachers, the opening and improvement of individual farms, and generally such objects as Congress and its wisdom shall deem necessary to promote the agricultural improvement and civilization of said bands. Article 7. An agent shall be appointed for said bands who shall be located at Lake Traverse, and whenever there shall be 500 persons of said bands permanently or located upon the Devil's Lake Reservation, there shall be an agent or other competent person appointed to superintend at that place agricultural, educational, and mechanical interests of said bands. Article 8. All expenditures under the provisions of this treaty shall be made for the agricultural improvement and civilization of the members of said bands authorized to locate upon the respective reservations as herein before specified, in such manner as may be directed by law. But no goods, provisions, groceries, or other articles except materials for the erection of houses and articles to facilitate the operations of agriculture shall be issued to Indians or mixed blood on either reservation unless it be in payment for labor performed or for produce delivered, provided when the persons located on either reservation by reason of age, sickness, or deformity are unable to labor, the agent may issue clothing and subsistence to such persons from such supplies as may be provided for said band. Article 9. The withdrawal of Indians from all dependence upon the chase as a means of subsistence necessary to the adoption of civilized habits among them. It is desirable that no encouragement be afforded them to continue their hunting operations as means of support, and therefore it is agreed that no person will be authorized to trade for furs or peltries within the limits of the land claimed by said bands as specified in the second article of this treaty. It being contemplated that the Indians will rely solely upon agricultural and mechanical labor for subsistence, and that the agent will supply the Indians and mixed bloods on the respective reservations with clothing, provisions, and etc., as set forth in Article 8, so soon as the same shall be provided for that purpose. And it is further agreed that no person, not a member of said bands, parties hereto, whether white, mixed blood, or Indian, except persons in the employ of the government, or located under its authority, shall be permitted to locate upon said lands, either for hunting, trapping, or agricultural purposes. Article 10. The chiefs and headmen located upon either of the reservations set apart for said bands are authorized to adopt such rules, regulations, or laws for the security of life and property, the advancement of civilization, and the agricultural prosperity of the members of said bands upon the respective reservations, and shall have authority under the direction of the agent and without expense to the government to organize a force sufficient to carry out all such rules, regulations, or laws, rules and regulations for the government of said Indians, as may be prescribed by the Interior Department, provided that all rules, regulations, or laws adopted or amended by the chiefs and headmen on either reservation shall receive the same sanction of the agent. In testimony whereof, we, the commissioners representing the U.S. and the delegates representing the Sisseta and Wapata bands of Sioux Indians, have hereunto set our hands and seals at the place and on the day and year above written. Louis V. Boji, Commissioner of Indian Affairs, W. H. Watson, signed in the presence of Charles E. Mix, Gabriel Renville, Head Chief, Sisseton and Wapatan Bands, Wamdi Purita, His Ex Mark, Head Sisseton Chief, Tekken Du Pata Anka, His Ex Mark, Head Wapatan Chief, Oya Du, His Ex Mark, Sisseton, Ampatataka, His Ex Mark, Chief Wapata, John Otherlay, Akitanjin, <laughs> His ex mark, Sisseton soldier. Waxi Kunmaza, his ex mark, Sisseton soldier. Wasuke, his ex mark, Sisseton soldier. Wamaduta, his ex mark, Sisseton soldier. Haksidang, Waxde, his ex mark, Sisseton soldier. Wakanto, his ex mark, Sisseton soldier. Ekenan Jinke, his ex mark, Sisseton soldier. Kenteyapa, his ex mark, Sisseton soldier. Tadang. Tadanika, his ex mark, Sisseton soldier. Tawapa Maza, his ex mark, Sisseton soldier. Wandiyeza, his ex mark, Sisseton soldier. Tekun Repetepeda, his ex mark, Sisseton soldier. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> what come up? No, pa. His ex mark, Wapaton soldier. Ek super hey you, his ex mark, Wapaton soldier. Ek take ye, his ex mark, Wapaton soldier. Kanga duta, his ex mark, Wapaton soldier. Witnesses to signature above chiefs and soldiers Charles E. Mix, Benjamin Thompson, J.R. Brown and Excess M.A. Brown Interpreter, Charles Crawford, Thomas E. McGraw, J.H. Leavenworth, A.B. Norton, George B. Jonas, Frank S. Mix.